Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. So this week I'm off for vacation, and I'd really like to get something done that I can actually feel like I accomplished. So for two years, I've had a Magnum X5 airless sprayer sitting here in the shed waiting to paint the house, and I have a five-gallon bucket of uh, Bear Premier Plus, no, Bear Premium Plus Paint and Primer Ultra Pure White, whatever that is. Um... 200 bucks a fry gallon bucket though. I know that that was not a fun purchase. Anyway, that said, I want to start painting the house. So we need to load up all our goodies in the car. And I even bought wand extensions. And uh, yeah, we're going to head over. So I'll see you over there. And then we'll talk over, well, not just what we got to do to get this thing painted, but how poor it's going to be. All right, so we're over here in Oxford, we're over here at the house, and if you haven't seen it, it needs some work. So, I wanna show you a couple of the things that we're running into as far as when we go to paint this thing, so. Now some of this stuff will flake off, you can see that with my fingers. Now there's other places that are so hard you just can't get it to come off very easily, so that's a, that's a thing. Same thing over here, a lot of this stuff, I don't know what this paint is or was, I don't know what it's made of, I don't know if it's leaded or not, it probably is, but, it's a nightmare to work with, as you can see. I mean, that's why some of this stuff can come off, some of this stuff doesn't, and we've tried various different things. I haven't tried the heat gun thing yet, but for the most part, this is kind of what we've been dealing with. If we look at the house from this side, this is the side that everybody can see coming down Main Street. And you can see how bad the paint is here. Now, obviously there's not much paint there, but it's because it's, you know, is what it is. Same thing over here. It's very dark and dingy. We had a lot of mold stuff up there that we had to scrape off and whatnot. So uh, the idea is we wanna just throw some paint on this, something. Get some paint on here somehow, just to brighten it up a little bit. But we have things like this we have to figure out how to get off. Um, this is hard mounted to this. I can't really pry it off because it'll pull the siding down. Um, I didn't bring a bit with me or a crowbar even but we're gonna to need to try to get these keyholes out of there. I don't know how you do that. Uh, likewise, we can cut all the wire down. We'll have to do that because we don't wanna cheese keep it there. I also have to get my camera off, which is great. And then if we come over here, this canopy over top of this doorway, well, that needs to come down. You can see right here, it's already kind of starting to fall off in multiple places it looks like it was lagged in at some point but that's kind of backing out so we're just going to take this whole thing down at some point and we're going to remake it obviously that needs to come down before we can put some paint on we have to kind of cover up our windows for the most part now a lot of this stuff here we've got to do some you know uh hand brushing a lot of this stuff has to get done and then this one up here as well we're going to pull that off i think that one is actually really solid. Maybe we won't pull that one off. But again, we got lots of wires we got to get rid of, cut off. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means that we need to worry about a few things. We have to get a ladder out that will reach up to cut the wire. Now, I have one of them laying back here, and that's perfectly fine. However, I wasn't thinking ahead when I got to the uh, camera it smells like a cat's been out here. Uh, when it comes to the camera, I, I had a long extension ladder, and I have that ladder. It's on the other side of the house. It's also a bear to put up and move by yourself. Unfortunately, I think that's the ladder I have to use to get to that camera. I'm pretty sure that's what I use, and I don't think any of my other ladders are quite tall enough. I did have a ladder over at the house that I could have brought with me, and I should have brought with me. It's an extension ladder... I don't think it's quite as big as the other one, but it's certainly a lot more manageable. I should have brought it. I didn't, I should have. So maybe the camera will be the last thing. We're not painting today, obviously. We're just gonna work on stuff. We also need to go inside and see if I have a scraper inside. All right, well, we're getting there. Uh, got the big ladder up. That was less fun. Although I did learn a new trick to getting it up. One of the problems I've always had with it is you lay it down, you put the feet on the ground, 
we try to lift the back end up so it goes up but then the we hit a balancing point and then it suddenly starts going all a kilter and usually what will happen is the bottom of the ladder that you're walking towards as you lift up from the top walking hand over hand by rungs eventually the feet lift up you lose balance and then everything starts kicking everywhere which is exactly those don't look like 25s now that i'm here <laughs> Fuck. if i just brace the bottom of the ladder against the basement of the house right down there i can stand it straight up basically straight up the side of the house now obviously I've got a foot and a half of overhang soffit, but once I've got it basically straight up, I can lift up and walk the feet of the ladder backwards away from the house. And that actually worked. Going down might be a little bit more of a challenge only because it'll be harder to keep the, uh, that's what I'm looking for, harder to keep the feet planted against the side of the house. In theory, it's the same operation, but but anyway, I got the camera down. I just have to get the bracket off. Really would like to find my scraper and start that, but since I can't find my scraper right handy, I'm going to shift gears after I get this bracket off. And we're gonna take a look at this porch thing. Cause that has gotta go. Yeah. All right, so the tricky part is up here, the paint is better than it is down there in regards to flaking, but it also makes it harder to scrape off. So it's not as flaky as down there, but it still needs to be scraped off somehow and it's harder to do that up here. Some places you can kind of get chipped away, but it's gonna be a lot harder to scrape this off. So so that's where it goes back to saying where this is not gonna be pretty. Because areas like that, areas like the front of the porch, they're gonna be a nightmare to try to scrape off. And I'm not gonna be able to get everything. So my plan is to scrape off everything I can scrape off. And what I can't either feather it out with a grinder and a flap disc or depending on what it looks like just go straight over it so it's not going to look perfect but it's certainly going to look a lot better than what it does so basically this porch is barely hanging on by not many threads as you can see um really not holding on by much at all at this point probably just this brace that i put up the tricky part of that is how am i going to hold it up not get killed by it and take these out and I think the answer lies in this room so I think the key to taking this down is going to be to stand in here reach out with my drill zing those suckers off and run We'll get a pry bar or something knock that thing out well i apologize for not getting the theatrics but it's down so now we're back on the go find a scraper mission now once upon a decade i had said scraper in here but then i threw all my halloween stuff in here and i probably didn't move it out of the way before i did that so, for example, here's a whole bunch of this. Uh, and I should mention, these things are absolutely garbage when it comes to trying to clear that off. Uh, there's their perfect storm stuff. I'm pretty sure it would have been over on this side if I still had it. Um, there's a flat bar. It's nice to have. Um, extension cord wrappers. Jack. There it is right there. Perfect. One thing I used to do with the scraper is I would sit out here and I would pick away in here, trying to scrape this back. If you look right here, you can see how detailed this gets versus how muddy it ends up getting after it's all not cleared out. So trying to scrape this back was a 
it was kind of a, a big thing for me. I, I really was trying to get this done. Here's the problem. I have four of these down here. Not to count all the scroll work up there that probably is just as caked on. So in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scrape the loose stuff off. So if we come over here, we're basically gonna scrape anything that's loose, anything that breaks free. That's what we're gonna scrape. And anything that doesn't come off, it's just getting painted over because uh, I ain't got that kind of time. So sure, up close, it's not going to look the greatest, but from the street, which is where it matters, it's going to look a lot better than it does now. All right, well, I think that's about as much scraping as I feel like doing now. So you can see, like down here, we've got this good. Now, the problem I have is I need to start up there. And I haven't figured this out yet because this ladder is a bear to move. Um, I don't know how big it is, but it's got to be like a friggin' 40 foot extension ladder. It is absolutely massive, but it's very heavy. So trying to move it from up there is a whole different story. But I also need to get it down farther so that way I can, uh, well, reach it with the paint gun. Or I have to get it up higher so it's against the roof so I can reach underneath it with the paint gun but it also is crooked, which doesn't give me a lot of confidence. So there's a lot of weird things I haven't figured out about what we're gonna do here. I started to tape up a window right there, and that tape is absolutely annoying. And the problem other than that, like, so the bottom, I've actually still got the screen on, so that's, uh, well, not gonna help a whole lot. The paint, or the tape won't stick to the wood, especially the paint that's on the wood. So that doesn't help. So I've decided that we're just gonna wing it with the painter. Uh, we're gonna wing it with the sprayer and just try to not paint everything. Anyway, um, that said, we're gonna figure this ladder out and then we're gonna get our paint sprayer and our five gallon bucket of paint and we're just gonna go to town. What's the worst that can happen? All right, so I know that all of the seven people that are watching this are probably screaming about lead paint. So let me address a couple things in regards to that. Yes, wear a respirator. Don't just go off and, you know, in gloves and stuff. Don't just go off and just start, you know, inhaling this sort of stuff. Uh, it's actually why I was a little uh, okay with it raining yesterday. It cuts down on the dust. One of the, uh, one of the uh, recommendations is if you're scraping to use a mister. So you can like mist it down with water and then scrape it, right? So that way the dust doesn't get airborne as much. But the bigger issue that people are going to scream about is that um, how dare I not be completely enclosed in a tent and all this other stuff. Uh, in short, there are regulations out there in place for safe disposable and disposable safe disposal and handle of uh, handling of lead paint i can't talk this morning now all of that very valid very good points however there is a caveat in new york state at least don't know about where you are but in new york if you're a homeowner and you're not for hire you're not a contractor you're not being paid to do the work you don't have to abide by a damn thing. Um, I think it's semi-stupid. Uh, I think on the one hand, as a homeowner, you shouldn't be held to the same standard as a high professional when it comes to certain things. However, on the other hand, when it comes to hazardous materials, I mean, I think everybody should be held to some sort of, some sort of standard. That said, that's why I don't have quite as much equipment as you might see in a traditional lead removal process. However, on the flip side of that, I am going through, I am uh, vacuuming up, I am cleaning up all of the paint uh, clippings, shavings, chips, there you go. The third part of this is uh, you might be complaining about the fact that I'm not getting everything scraped off, and I totally get that. One of the other acceptable treatments, uh, if you will, uh, methods to treat lead paint 
is, I forget the technical term, but it's basically like encapsulation. In short, it means painting over the existing paint. That way it gets, you know, locked into place, if you will. Which is why I'm not having a hard time leaving paint on the walls. The stuff that's really loose, that's what I'm scraping off. And that's because that stuff has a chance to just flake off as soon as the gun hits it, and then I have to go back over it anyway. The more I can avoid that, the more I can, you know, kind of knock off originally, then the less I have to deal with that later. Nope, that's not it either. Some point in time, I swear I bought an extension for this uh, an extension pole, and I can't freaking find it. Anyway, I just wanted to address that real quick, because I know everybody's going to scream about, oh my god, lead paint, how are you doing, what are you doing? Should I be suited up in a full Tyvek suit? Probably. Um, so, am I being the absolute safest? Admittedly, probably not. But when it comes to the treatment of lead paint removal, um, you know, as a homeowner, at least in New York State, as a homeowner, you are bound by no rules whatsoever. All right, let's go get the generator on. And let's, uh... Stir up some paint. gonna need a lot more paint at $200 per five gallon bucket. I'm thinking probably four more buckets at this point. And now I gotta get that big ass ladder back here so I can get up there and do that part. Yeah. Should also mention there's a power line behind me.
yeah, we're down to like a third of a bucket, if not even a quarter. So I wanna get a good chunk of the top of this side knocked out because you can see this side, definitely not covering as much as I hoped, but then again, it was bare wood. So to be expected, so I'm gonna real quick hit that and then we're gonna go up, get as much of the top done as we can before we run out of paint. Well, um, as much fun as that was, and to be fair, that's actually not the hard part. Um, I gave up caring about the windows. We'll scrape that back off later. Uh, just <laughs> got no patience. And uh, overall though, it's whiter, which was the goal. But this one side, took that entire five gallon bucket of paint and we didn't quite finish. Now, fortunately, the next bucket of paint will easily cover this whole side because now that there's paint on where all the bare wood was, it won't be soaking in as much. So the second coat will cover better, meaning we use less paint to do it. Great. But we still have to do the whole front and I'm expecting a whole bucket for that, if not to. And then the other side, which will be basically, that side will, one bucket will do fine because that side, we're only doing the front half. Like there's really no point in painting down the, the rest of the side. I think that side's actually still got paint on it because it's in between the buildings and it hasn't gotten weather beaten as well. Now, obviously this also doesn't take into consideration any of the trim painting or anything like that. And stuff like the trim, I really am gonna go back through and we're gonna scrape it back down to bare and then repaint it. This was just to get everything coated and make it look better than it was. And you might be looking behind me and going, that doesn't really look a whole lot better. And if you compare it to pictures from just a few years ago, before the paint had gotten really damaged, you might think the same thing. You might think that, hey, that really didn't look a whole lot different than it used to uh, when you first bought the house. But let me show you the before and after picture now. Um, it's definitely a lot better than it was. I still need to find an accent color that I like and uh, I need to find more money so I can go buy three more buckets of paint at $200 a pop. Uh, I will say though, the sprayer worked fine. I could see this being perfect. I mean, this is a big house and I could see that being easily adequate for a home DIYer and it would do a lot better if you did the proper prep work and not what I did, so. Now, it might also seem pretty wasteful to drop hundreds and hundreds of dollars on essentially temporary paint because if we do want to go through and do this the right way, you have to scrape and sand and all that stuff. However, this also is sealing up all that bare wood that has had nothing on it. And since I don't have the time and the money to do everything the right way, we're gonna do it the wrong way to at least cover up the bare wood and uh, hopefully preserve it a little bit longer from there. So anyway, uh, painting's done. I gotta figure out how to clean this up with no hose. I think I'm gonna grab a couple of garbage bags and just put everything in a garbage bag, take it home and then wash it out when I get there. Cause I think it's only like one o'clock, uh, 12.30, not even one o'clock, so cool.
Alrighty, apologies for the generator, it's right below our feet, but we're getting there, but we definitely need a second coat on the front, uh, front of the house. It's starting to kind of show through a little bit of the tinted yellow, so if I stand back and I'm looking and I'm comparing the pillars, which I haven't painted, to the house, which I have, I'm not seeing a difference, and uh, I mean not as big a difference as I should be seeing. So we definitely need to let it sit for a few minutes, uh, so we're going to give it a little bit. I'm going to go grab a couple other things, get it done. Uh, probably grab the chainsaw or something and just do some other stuff come back and then we're going to hit this with a second coat and hopefully that brightens it up quite a bit all right so we're just sitting here painting some uh, railings i wasn't going to originally and uh honestly truth be told i'd rather not have them at all and if i did have to keep them i'd rather they've been black but as it happens you kind of have to per code keep a railing on your porch so I can't really take it down, at least not yet, until I've got something to replace it with. And uh, the flip side of that is I don't have any black paint. So I can't really redo it in black, which would have been ideal. So in the meantime, we uh, I just happened to hit one of them with the spray gun before I ran out of spray paint. And uh, I figured, you know what, heck with it. And when I mean heck with it, I mean, yep, let's run out of spray paint two railings in, leaving us to hand brush the entire rest of the railings. I'm almost done, though. I've only got about a couple feet of this one left, and then that's it. And then we'll uh, clean up the front porch as best we can, and then go take a picture. So, see you in a bit. Now, if you remember, the whole point of this was so that when we walk around this corner, it's supposed to look more presentable. So, now that it's done, I'm gonna turn the camera around, we're gonna walk around the corner, and we're gonna see what it looks like. We're going to call it good for the painting project for now, but it certainly looks better than it did by far, which is awesome. A couple things uh, of note. One is the front definitely needs a third coat, only because the side on the side, the side, didn't have paint on it, and the paint that was on it was white. So that made it very easy for this white to blend with that white or just be above it. The paint on the front was yellow, though, so you can still catch just enough of the yellow hue behind the white paint to make it really really need a third coat i think so uh we'll see though um it's certainly better than it was so that's great so we have to figure out a trim color i think i want more blue than gray unlike this this is more gray than blue but i think i want some blue maybe violet uh lavender i don't know yet but we do want some more color but we also have that centerpiece up there is still yellow, not white. Fortunately, it's hidden behind the trees, but otherwise we need to get that fixed. And uh, you can sort of see, you might be able to tell there's kind of that yellow showing behind the pillars. It's certainly better than just bright yellow was, but you can still see that yellow hue even against the background. It does stand out pretty good, but it's at least not noticeable as much as if I had left it yellow. But I think what the plan is going to be is to figure out our trim color, get a couple gallons of that, when it comes to the trim, we're going to go ahead and we're really going to scrape that down a lot because that's going to be a lot more noticeable. And if we can get that smoothened out, it's going to be a lot better looking, even with the white paint not being smooth. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to plan on getting another uh, bunch of white paint, another five gallon bucket. So we need 200 bucks there, another oh, 100 bucks and a couple of gallons of, uh, of trim paint. Uh, so we need to figure that out. And we're going to run a lift. So during that time, we can take this tree down using the lift and we can do all the rest of our painting with the lift at the same time. Ideally, we do all that in a day. Um, although I don't know if painting is gonna make it in a day, so we might need a weekend. So basically I need to come up with another thousand dollars to finish off the front of the house painting as far as the paint goes. 
we're probably looking at uh, three, four hundred dollars worth of paint and probably another five hundred dollars to rent one of those uh, articulating lifts for the weekend. So, yay. Um, but at least once that's done and this, uh, this thing is out of the way, which should be a lot easier to do now that there's no power to that line. I'm not so worried about hitting it. Anywho, um, starting to lose my voice today. It's five o'clock. I'm very warm. I'm going to pack up the, what's that thing called? Paint sprayer and, uh, head home, give that a good flushing pack it away for a while because it's going to be a while before we get back to this but at least for the time being this looks a lot better than it had yeah i know there was a lot of technique that probably could have been done better there's a lot of better ways to have done this but um well with the budget i've got the time i've got and i think goal wise we we succeeded it definitely looks better than it did even though it's not perfect so better is better even if it's you know not the best way to do it whatever take care we'll see you later